Good morning, folks. Stick around for some cool announcements at the end. We're starting at Soho, Lasco, with Mercury exiting the blocking disk on C2. The conjunction is over. Looking at the last 24 hours on our star reveals a nice calm. We did have a few filament shifts, like on the western limb, and of the southern lateral rope deep towards the polar area. It released south away from our planet. Let's come over to spaceweathernews.com and find much of the same with solar flaring. No X-ray events in our direction, and the sunspots remain magnetically separated despite some solid growth. We'll also be watching today for the crest of a new sunspot group. We've been eyeing his umbral magnetic fields for the last few days, and now it's coming over the limb into view. Well, we've expected impact in the solar wind, and we got it. It's tough to tell what is CME versus coronal hole in co-rotating regions, but the intense solar wind is easily visible impacting yesterday, and Earth entered a level 1 geomagnetic storm last night. Nothing major. However, the K index shows a level 3 storm, and the Q index shows a level 2, reverberating now. With Mercury exiting conjunction and the next coronal hole pinched by the blue fields here, Quaking going forward is a bit tough to forecast, so let's quickly review our previous OLR location-based warnings. It was November 8th that we first attempted to identify seismically prone areas. The first one on the list, Sumatra, shook that very night. Just two days later, it was clear that the most energetic area on Earth was somewhere around Chile and Peru. They took two 6.9s that night. After that, the OLR got a little squirrely and multiple areas went on watch, including Sumatra's energy heading quickly towards China. That night, the East China Sea took a large rumble. We took a few days off, but two nights ago it was clear that the Solomon Islands and Argentina were showing anomalies. Yesterday, Solomon Islands took a magnitude 7 earthquake, a very strong rumble, and Argentina took a tremor as well, not as large, but then again Argentina doesn't shake as often as Chile or Peru, and so this one is significant. Also had a bunch above average quakes in the United States, that Oklahoma rumble may be frac related. Among the articles linked for you today is one on how Antarctic ice melt is not going to be as fast as the extreme warming proponents have suggested. We also see NASA's Earth Observatory witnessing the first ice gains on an Icelandic peak in more than a decade. The Rainfall Measurement Mission has analyzed days of rainfall over India where records have fallen, but more importantly, more than 70 people have died in the floods. They also ran a hurricane hunter around Typhoon Infa in the Pacific. The strengthening earth spot storm is due north of that Solomon quake with a smaller spot to the south of it. It was potentially an earth spot rumble. We have a tropical system on watch south of Mexico as well, but the real story in this part of the world is still cutting across the United States. We noted the hurricane force winds on the western edge of the low as it crested the western United States, and we've mentioned the tornadoes on the east side, but I really wanted you to see how the central pressure node, the earth spot, is driving the worst weather around the node itself. Folks, the speaker lineup is set for part two of Observing the Frontier. We've discussed some of the speakers before, including familiar and unfamiliar names. How about one more familiar one? Bottom right, that's Dr. Uyen, and he has agreed to come speak to us in Phoenix as well. January 30th and 31st, 2016, come see the frontier of some very cool science. The videos from our first conference will become available in just a few days, and the hard copy of our book by the same name will be able to be ordered at the start of December. We've got Europe, Down Under, current conditions, and shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.